Oh. Hello. Hi, uh, I'm Charlene. I am a fellow journey life coach along with Jasper, uh, as well as I am a natural born shaman through ancestral lineage. I am Filipino and for my people, we were called Babylon. We were women who were poet priestesses, who were wisdom keepers, culture keepers, faith keepers, um, who walked the middle, right, between the spirit and the physical world and kept the balance between the two. Um, and what I do in my work is I really bring the wisdom of my ancestors and those gifts. I bring that to bear along with the gifts that I've learned myself um, through my own hero's journey. You know, I'm a survivor of domestic violence. Uh, my ex is in prison for life for torture for what he did to me. Um, and it was through that journey of like really realizing, wow, you know, not blaming myself for what happened really, but just all the ways, right, that you walk it back for people and just all these different things that were um, a little bit codependent, a little bit, you know, me not speaking my truth. Well, a lot of it, like all of it, you know, and how that just contributes to get you to that point. Um, but after getting to that point and realizing that, then it was like, well, okay, now what do I do? <laughs> with all this therapy was great. I got free therapy through the state, but it was when I found John, the angry therapist, mm -hmm. that that like really changed my life. Like I had coaching sessions with him like three to five times a week, sometimes paying out of my own pocket. Um, but like in two and a half months, it totally changed my life because it really showed me, okay, who is it that you really want to be on the other side? Right. And then what is it, what's at stake and what are you going to do to get there? Right. Instead of really kind of going over what happened, kind of mm -hmm. thinking about well okay well this is where I want to go what are we going to do about that um, and then just putting it into action so you know it's been my own journey and after that I went through this whole phase where I was kind of like sowing my wild oats after I stopped seeing John like I tell him it was like I was like a little baby bird going off into the world and trying new things and partying too much and like the wrong kinds of friends like my party mm -hmm. friends all these different things, but it was through that process that I really acquired wisdom and like really realized, oh, okay, well now I have all these tools and now I can like totally change my life. Cause I used to be a totally different person. Um, and like, who is it that I want to be then? Do I really want to do this? Is this really like the best thing for me? Uh, and I went through a Kundalini awakening where I became intuitive literally overnight, like in that process. And when that happened, um, I just dove into my gifts. The way that I um, became awakened was really, um, it was really traumatic. It was really, really traumatic. And to heal from that, that's how I found shamanism um, and energy healing too. And it was really interesting because like I had obviously access to like therapists and coaches and all these things that were very like straight edge, you know, like <laughs> normal, like above board. And then I was like, okay, well, we'll just try this thing. I don't know. It seems like it'll work but it turned out to be my thing. That's why I was so attracted to it. Um, and just became something that I had a real natural gift for my own shaman. Um, she went off into the jungle for like a couple of years to go work with plant medicine. She had already done that before, but wanted to do it longer. And I don't want to cheat on them. So <laughs> I was like, well, I'm really good at doing shamanic journeys because of the last two sessions I had with her. That's what we did. It's like, well, let me try and learn this for myself so I don't cheat on her. And it turns out I had a gift for it. And then everything just unfolded from there, right? Um, over like one weekend, I had the idea, you know what? I'm going to have a business. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to put energy healing and I'm going to put coaching together and it's going to be great. It's going to be badass. I'm going to help people get amazing results. Um, put a couple thousand dollars down on someone. And then that's how like the whole journey coaching started. Because an, an opening showed up in journey and then an opening showed up to learn how to do energy healing and then shamanic healing and just, you know, uh, what I tell people is like, you never know the journey that you're on, where you'll end up. But if you just keep walking with faith and like, just trying to know yourself as best you can, you'll find the thing that's for you. You'll find the thing that's meant for you. It's just, are you going to be brave enough to like say, okay, I'm going to jump in. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Once you yeah. do, or are you not? Um, but you know, we all have this journey and it never makes sense while we're going through it. It's only looking back. Um, but you never know, like, right? Like you could be starting off here in five years, 10 years, whatever your life could be totally different. You'll never know. But if certainly if you just stay right here and you don't change, uh, you'll be right here.
<laughs> we don't want to be right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, like maybe you take like a couple steps like outside, right? But like, <laughs> but you'll still be right here, you know? So um, yeah, go explore, do your thing, like dive into yourself. That's like the coolest adventure that you'll ever go through. But yeah, <laughs> so that's my very long, short story in a nutshell. My stories are so, yeah, involved. <laughs> So, like, when you just started your journey, like, were you ever, like, resistant or did you just, like, when you say, like, follow your intuition, like, how do you, how do you know? Like, how can we know? Oh, gosh. Well, you know, that's kind of the thing. You never, like, 100% know. But that's the human brain that always wants certainty. Like, yes, every single time. Yes, this is true. You know, but that's the thing about faith. You just have to trust and, like, you know when something's right. You know, you know when definitely something's wrong. Uh, the analogy that I like to tell people is, you know, you put on a new pair of kicks or you put on an outfit and you know, all of a sudden when you put it on, you are like, damn, I'm fine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that feeling when you're like, yes, I'm looking good. And it's like that, you know, mm. all those things that aren't, yes, I'm looking good, honey. Look at you. Right? <laughs> so if you know, if it doesn't give you that kind of feeling, probably not your thing right? Probably not your thing. And, and you won't always feel like really energized about going through the process. Sometimes it sucks, but um, gosh, you know, it, it, I, I liken it very much to working out, right? The, when you start going to the gym at first, nobody wants to do that. Who wants to get up at 5, 4 a.m., you know, eat broccoli and chicken and that's <laughs> it and, you know, work out for an hour and do that for months and you only see results really after what 12 weeks that's like three months and you're only just starting to see results and you don't really yeah. see long-term results until what like six months and then like mm -hmm. a year and you have to put in all that work and it's hard when you don't see it immediately mm -hmm. right it, it, when you don't have like that physical sort of gratification that's easy to measure but man when it's stuff that kind of workout that you do for like your soul and like your own personal development that helps your relationships become better a little bit of ease and grace here and here not holding on so much to resentment having better tools that feels like really really good too i mean that kind of feels like a little bit more amazing sometimes because you don't really need right this interaction with this other person to feel better here you, mm. you have it here already you don't need mm -hmm. their validation or approval or their external mm -hmm. sort of gaze upon you but that's a very long answer <laughs> <laughs> no i love it i mean that's yeah i mean for me it's really awesome to get like a different perspective um mm -hmm. like leading up to this call like i took a break um because i also feel like it's because it's energy exchanges right like and so it was like some of these uh, conversations i feel like it it gets kind of heavy uh -huh. and so i guess for me i haven't figured out the best way for self-care about that uh -huh. i don't know if you have any i don't know if you i know you can't really give advice but um like i don't know for your coaching like how does that go like i feel like some conversations can be really heavy and like what do you do for self-care to re-energize i guess or cleanse is that the right word i don't know for sure to have boundaries essentially Ooh. that's it um we, and you know with pe like people share really really heavy stuff with me you know like really really deep things that they don't share with other people and it's really being the witness to their story and not being so personally involved in it sometimes like because sometimes when you're listening to a story you'll actually put yourself there or you're walking through it um but it's a way to like just kind of stand back and just right be here to like listen to what it is that you have to say and like not have so much of myself in it i think um with you in particular just remembering like um as you're listening to someone's story not to get like super involved or invested in it um not that you not that it's a way of like not caring about them but um understanding too like that they're not in that same place right even though they may be reliving that how about you keep them here right and thinking about them this person that they are on the other side rather than the person that they were i don't know if that makes sense um but uh also some crystals might be helpful for you like you put a little bit of black tourmaline 
something like, ooh, see, I have this smoky quartz here. It helps to absorb negativity from other people. So you put that in between you and like your computer as you're talking to them. You feel very different here. You can vibe off of this guy a little bit. <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't know much about crystals, so like, I guess for someone who doesn't really know much about them, how would you introduce the baby steps into it? Or do you, I don't know, I don't even know where to buy crystals. Oh, well, you're in Vegas, so there's like this really awesome <laughs> crystal shop that has like amethyst cathedrals and everything. There's a lot there. But um, crystals are really cool. You know, they actually use them in computer chips. And there's a reason that they've used in watches for like hundreds of years, because they really do keep energy, right? You have a quartz crystal for watches. Um, they really do transmit energy through them. If you think about their structure, they have a very regular sort of molecular structure right so because of that they can transmit information they can also hold and program information like an intention that you want to do so you can use a crystal sort of like a battery where like let's say like well i want to program you to help me be clear of other people's energy negative stuff keep that with them and keep me separate and you would like ask it and program it um and you having that intention it works sort of like quantum physics does intention where intention is everything and holding that intention into that it's sort of because again uh it's a crystal it's got that very regular structure it can hold that intention and keep broadcasting it sort of like a battery or a flashlight going while you're still doing this right you have it switched on um that's i guess the easiest way to explain but i mean this is why they have like uh crystals and computer chips like right now emeralds, tourmalines, etc. NASA uses black tourmaline as a piezoelectric material because they literally transmit or transmute energy into different forms. Um, so when you talk about doing that with intention, that's the same thing. That's ha harnessing the energy of what it is that you'd like to happen or um, some sort of intention that you have, putting it in here and letting that amplify it for you. So crystals are very good um, friends, allies, tools to work with. Uh, I always have like a bajillion, very literally, I have like a bowl of crystals here because like there's just so many places where I have crystals already. I just have a bowl of them uh, <laughs> for storage. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, they're really, really good for whatever sort of work it is that you want to do. I mean, if they're good enough for electronics and transmitting information that way, think of what they do in your environment. There's all different types of crystals too, uh, for things like grounding, for protection, for self-love, for whatever it is that you like. I though am a fan of just asking it, so what is it that you would like to do for me? Oh, okay, that's what you'd like to do? Okay, well then how about we do that then? We'll program you and then we'll get to work. Because some don't want to do certain jobs and that's okay. <laughs> but, um, I always tell people an easy one to start with is selenite, especially dudes, because uh, you can find selenite towers and it looks like, you know, uh, in Superman when he's in like the crystal whatever cave where he puts like the little sticks of information in, it looks like that. So for guys, um, for, you know, a lot of like heterosexual men, a selenite tower is a very easy way to go into crystals. Selenite's very good for cleansing any sort of negative energy, connects you to positive energy, opens up line of communications between you and the angels. So, yeah. Do we have to clean them or cleanse them? Because I've seen people like a recharge or something like crystals. Is that like. Totally. There are ones that do and the ones that don't. There are ones that are self cleansing, like selenite is and uh, citrine is, kyanite is. But most of them you do um, want to recharge, like at the full moon. So, using that energy, right, because it's at its fullest uh, point to cleanse it, you just put your crystals like underneath the moonlight. You don't even have to actually have them in the moonlight. You just have the intention, you know, because sometimes your window or whatever it is isn't convenient. Maybe you don't want to put all your shit out for your neighbors to see, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, so you just kind of put it near the closest window that you can, and you just have the intention that the moonlight is on it. You charge it overnight in the morning. They are fresh and brand new. You can also do things like smoke cleansing. You can even use your breath to cleanse it. You can use intention. Um, 
a big piece of selenite too because it cleanses and charges other crystals which is amazing but all different ways but yes you do want to charge them up because just like anything you know you need a little juice you need you need you need to give and get and um having them in contact with the earth is always very good um just to charge them up again so then that way they have more energy to do whatever it is that you want them to do um one thing that i did want to ask you was mm -hmm. um when you did my first tarot reading you mm -hmm. were talking you told me that you were feeling like sensations like through your arms and stuff yeah um what does that like mean because i i feel that sometimes but i don't know i don't know how to explain it like does that happen to most people or i don't know if that makes any sense <laughs> sure yeah so like intuitive signs from your guides telling you like oh hey you're on the right path totally it happens to everyone in totally different ways for some people they're visual where they might like see certain things or they might see colors or auras or different things like that for some people they hear or they might hear something actually telling them that or it's like that inner voice in their head that sounds a little bit different from the usual one that's there that says like hey go to do to that for some people it's sensation you know like you feel it in your body um you might have certain tells like shivers like for me it happened specifically on the left hand side of my body um when i first started doing the work i would also feel it like on the left hand side of my head like very distinctly um but you kind of learn over time that those are your tells just like anything you know um you get used to oh when that happens it's not just that i'm cold because why is it only happening on this half of my body so if you start to pay attention to when those signs happen and then what you're thinking about or what you're doing you can be like oh okay maybe i should do that now some people like look too much into this idea of signs like they look at angel numbers and like lose their shit, right? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which i totally get no it's it's exciting but there's also something in your brain called the um reticulated activation system which notices whenever you get excited and it likes that so if it notices that you get excited about angel numbers it will because your brain is amazing right like you only have control really over five percent of it 95 percent is subconscious your brain actually takes in all the information around you so like your brain will make you look up when the time is 11 11 like if you really really like that so you know whenever i tell people that they have any sort of signs what you want to do is notice it then be like oh, okay that's cool huh i wonder if that if that's a thing and just notice what it is that you're thinking about but like don't put too much stock into it but if you keep noticing that it happens maybe that's oh okay well if if i get that feeling and this is usually right well then i'm gonna go and i'm gonna do that thing whatever it is that i'm thinking about right uh, a lot of times it happens for me like if i'm having business ideas and then all of a sudden um if i'm seeing angel numbers i like to see them in like cars passing by because I have no control over that, right? And like, it's not like I'm looking for them, but it's usually the ones that are right in front of me. And if I like am thinking of something or ideas about my business or whatever, and I start seeing that, or I have thoughts about, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't do this, or man, maybe I should change this. And I start seeing signs like that, I'm like, well, maybe that's something to think about. Maybe I need to change that. <laughs> and the more you follow it, you know, your intuitive hits with your spirit guides, the more that they will open up to you because the more that you recognize it and you're like, oh, okay, that could be something. And you start following that path. Like, oh, look at this bitch. She's paying attention. Shit. Let me throw her some more, you know, like now that you're like listening to what it is that I'm saying, let me send you some more things. Some people see things like feathers, you know, some people see things like I see a lot of power animals. So different animals, like I live in the burbs, but you know, I see hawks all the time. Like, the shit like really like seriously or i see coyotes yeah. all the time oh, wow. like more than most people do and i'm like what? i mean it's not just all here it's like i actually get messages when i see them and just the more that you trust that the messages are right when you know that they're right like i don't know how to describe that feeling of knowing it's right even though everything else tells you that it could be wrong but there's just this thing inside that's like no this 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 is right and 
you just have to learn to go with that once you feel that and once you can correlate that feeling with whatever it is that your tell is. But to answer your question, the more that you go along with it, the more you say yes, send me more signs, the more they'll show up for you. Because it's like, oh, look at this bitch listening. Look at you. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation. <laughs> so, like, for numbers, like, I know, like, I mean, I, don't, I haven't really fully looked into it, but there's, like, num different numbers means different things. Mm -hmm. um, can I ask you one, though? Um, sure. For me, I always see, like, on the clock, I uh, always see um, one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means, but it's been, like, repeated a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, I think with that one, well, what I'm getting for you is that everything happens step by step. And just trust it. You're going along the right path. You know, it's just you, one, then you go two, and then you go three, and then you go four. It's not skipping. <laughs> yeah. We all want to skip. We all want to skip and get to like, okay, well, I'm at nine now, right? Am I good? <laughs> Can I not have to go through two through eight? But you have to, to get there. So it's just a process. Trust the process. That's and are you I mean. able to pick up like stuff when you talk to people? Like do things show up or? Oh, totally. Yeah. I totally get intuitive hits with people, but I don't try to like pry or anything with them or encourage that because I also want to have like a normal life and like be able to have like a normal conversation with someone without yeah. like constantly getting messages about mm. things that aren't my business, you know? So yeah. Um, some people say just to accept whatever messages you get, but at a certain point you're like, I, I, I don't need to know this information. Like really like this, let's give you your privacy. I would like to give people their privacy too. And I just want to have like a normal life. So for me, just like, just tell me the things that I really need to know. And if it's, if I feel called really to share it with someone, I always ask first mm -hmm. if they're okay with me sharing something with them. Cause I don't want to yeah. violate that boundary for them either. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, cause some people aren't ready to hear certain things and then I will tell them, but like more often than not, like, unless it's something important, I'm not going to do that because just, you know, again, I want to be normal. I don't want to start like picking up on like too much stuff of like random folks around me. That's okay. I'd, I'd rather not, even though I can. But if you open yourself up to that, then that's what's going to happen. And I, I would like my brain capacity for other things. <laughs> you know? How does one like open up? to I guess accepting it because I guess I've been just resisting so I, I don't know I think I just resist a lot in general but um mm -hmm. but just like seeing different like the numbers and just like certain things that do come up or like feelings and I just kind of like brush it off like I don't like can your guides like just really want to tell you stuff and you're just kind of like or if like for me I'm like mm, I don't want to <laughs> like when oh, they yeah. keep showing up <laughs> Um, they can eventually stop, oh, really? you know, because it's like anything, right? If you keep on knocking on a door and somebody keeps closing it in your face, you're like, okay, well, let me just wait for when you're ready to talk and then I'll come over. Um, let me not bother you. Um, your guides are always trying to, but sometimes, you know, um, there are different things that block people. Um, sometimes it's mindset, like people who need to control things a lot or think that things can only be a certain way. You know, um, people who tend to have like less imagination, it's harder. Like creative people, it's usually easier. For me, mm -hmm. kids, it's easier. Um, you know, adults are a little bit harder to bring into a journey sometimes, especially if they like to control things. Um, Cause it's hard for them just to accept whatever is there. Um, but it's, it's, it is possible. Again, like it's just kind of like working on your mindset sort of healing also your ability to believe in yourself and trust yourself. Cause that's the hardest thing about intuition. It's really trusting yourself above all else, above whatever it is that anybody has to say to you about what is the truth or anything. Like, you know, it like absolutely. And like, you know, it's right for you. Um, so part of it is learning to do that, but you can totally do like functional things to help with that. Um, it's called like changing your energy, changing your vibration, 
let's be high vibe, man. No, but like it's an actual thing. <laughs> okay. Okay. And it's affected by like things by like what you eat, the things that you do, the physical activity, how much water you drink, the environment that you're in. Um, and it's, you know, choosing those things that are a higher vibrational energy versus a denser vibrational energy. So lower vibrational stuff would be like things that make you feel bad, things that make you feel small. You know, maybe that's processed foods. Maybe that's being on social media all the time. Maybe that's binging on sugar, right? Maybe that's being around people who don't really support you. Maybe that's doing, right, being like in a loveless job where you're like stuck in a cubicle all day. Maybe it's like not connecting to nature and always being inside, right? That stuff is all like kind of low, what people call like lower vibrational. And also these feelings like resentment, anger, blame, shame, right, uh, guilt, these things are also considered lower vibrational emotions. So the more you feel those things or the more you're stuck in those cycles, unforgiveness, right, the more that you'll still kind of stay in that state. So you can change your energy to a higher vibrational energy and that will make it so you are more intuitive. Because like essentially for me, for my work, what it is, is I work with quantum physics extraordinarily well and in different dimensional realities, like that um, is essentially why I'm able to do it. I can manipulate energy, but also go into other places that are different, like energetic vibration, right? Like the shamanic worlds, like all up here, but here in this physical world, it's denser. So the more you're able to put yourself in a state with higher vibrational energy, and it's like you're tuning your body to be a vessel and the more that it can hold, it has a capacity to have that higher vibrational energy, but also in like taking in things that are higher vibrational energy, the better that you'll be able to get intuitive information. So it's doing things like eating less processed food, definitely more greens. Um, you can do specific greens and herbs too, like moringa. Um, what is it? Uh, cacao is very helpful as well. Um, unfluoridated water you know, so, so like natural spring water um, is really helpful. And again, less processed foods, like for some people, less meat. I think we talked about that a little bit yeah. Um, yeah. with going vegan. For some people, it helps them because they don't have the additional karma of whatever that animal was. Because if you're very sensitive to energy, I mean, factory farming isn't fun, <laughs> you know, for the animals. So if you're very sensitive to energy, then you take that on and then it's harder to like, feel better um that stuff also acts as like a uh, static in your like energetic field so it's hard for you to like tune in to different frequencies mm. but like if you listen to things like solfreggio frequencies which are a certain um frequency of music like you can google it on youtube look at me so old making this motion um but, you know you can listen to binaural beats you can listen to you can um go out in nature more move your body a little bit. Um, yin yoga and Pilates in particular are really good because it helps to open up because you have energetic channels in your body. And as you open up the physical ones, the, the ones around you in your energetic field open up too. Um, do things that you love, be with people that you really, who really support you and you support them who are healthy, nourishing relationships. Um, getting into that space of gratitude, forgiveness, right? Joy, compassion, um, being able to shift yourself to those states helps you vibrate higher, right? But it helps you essentially be a vessel for like a better quality of energy. So you have a better quality of energy, the more intuitive than that you can be. And, and a part of it too, obviously, is doing the work because you have to know yourself, right? So if you yeah, have like all yeah. this bullshit, right? Like from your trauma, from your childhood, from right, social things that have happened, um, things in your culture, from like traumatic experiences that you've had, it's harder to know who you are. And the less you know who you are, the less you're gonna be in tune to your intuition, which is really your inner wisdom, right? Like this is like tuning into like your higher self, like what you would call a soul who like is always there with you and always wants you like to win and always wants you to succeed. Um, it's just hard for us as human beings to really think really that big. Um, but we are connected that way. And if we're able to do more of those activities that shift us to that higher state, mm -hmm. the greater capacity that we have 
to be tuned in to those things. Obviously, meditation, super duper helpful. You can do things additionally with that, like breath work, energy healing, um, chakra balancing, all that to also help with that. But I mean, even just these changes in your physical things that you're doing, yeah. Yeah, you'll, it totally, it changes everything. It changes everything. So yes, you can develop your intuition. Uh, women, it is a little bit easier. Um, mm -hmm. Men can too, but you know, we all have like these biological, physiological structures in our brain, the pineal gland, um, which is like your third eye. But um, for women, it's a little bit easier to be in touch with their intuition because we're taught it's okay to be in touch with our emotions much more so than men are, right? So there's the additional hurdle of a man, you know, like a cis heteronormative man, mm -hmm. you know, um, a, a, you're taught like, no, you can't be in touch with your emotions. So if it's already hard for you to get in touch with your emotions, then to get in touch with your intuition on top of that is just an additional layer of making it difficult. But I know plenty of like, again, like straight cis heteronormative men who are intuitive right? Um, it's just some people have it turned on from birth, always. Mm -hmm. Some people go through a kundalini awakening like I do, where all of a sudden um, it's turned on. I don't recommend a kundalini awakening, by the way, to anybody either. I, I highly recommend that you go for it nice and slow. People all the time tell me they want to have it. I'm like, really? I know so many people, like mine was traumatic. Like everyone I've known who's had a kundalini awakening it's been traumatic. I know several people who have been hospitalized in mental institutions for several months, to even years, because of it, because they can't distinguish, right, these things. And then other people, you tell somebody that you're hearing voices and they think you're crazy. And it's like, no, you're hearing like your spirit guides and all these things, or you're feeling things, or you're seeing things. And other people don't get like that that's a real thing. Like, there's definitely people who are actually schizophrenic, right? and have that going on. But then there's also a portion of them too who have abilities, but are just telling it to the wrong people or they're undiagnosed or like it's just compounding things on top of it that make it harder for them. Um, you know, in shamanism, one of the things we say is like we look at people a lot of times who have mental illness as being the ones between the worlds. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times they were called to be spiritual healers because they could go right, this way or that way, because they're seeing this other thing that's happening. But the danger is, right, if somebody has like, like true mental illness with this, like a history of mental illness, or a genetic propensity to it, and then gifts as well, it just gets confusing about what's real and what's not like real, but you know, you know what I mean. But um, totally, absolutely something that you can develop totally something that I highly recommend. If you want to do that, you take the slow route. Trust me, not everyone is tough, like super tough like I am. It's not like easy and roses. Um, it's like a dark night of the soul. It's, it's, it's difficult. Um, like I said, I know many people who have been institutionalized. So please don't go seeking actively like an, a Kundalini awakening. Just like take the time, trust your process take the steps on your process, know yourself, do the work, and it will come. Um, but definitely you do want guidance on that if you're like actively looking to kind of turn that on, just because there's a lot of things that if you don't know what's out there, you're going to be unprotected and just, you want to be safe. It's like going out into the ocean and, you know, you got a scuba diving certificate. So let's go into South Africa where there's great white sharks. <laughs> no, yeah. Not ready <laughs> for that. Scuba diving. Yeah. You know, who needs, who needs like a cage around us? No, no, let's, let's, let's yeah. yeah. No, I mean, take your time. You don't, you, you, you really don't want to like get your chops, like, <laughs> you know, trying to swim away from a shark. <laughs> People don't know what's out there. So I highly advocate, go ahead, learn about it. You can get in touch with it, but just take baby steps. Don't rush yourself. Don't rush yourself. But there's lots of things that you can do. I can send you, actually, I'll tag you, I'll send, uh, I'll DM you a post that I had done about changing your energy so you can have like all this info. Yeah. Like baby steps though, like, is it like you, is it like work you have to, I don't want to say have to like do like every day or do you just like 
like when you say like ease into it like do we take breaks or I don't know like oh so yeah like um gosh I don't try to like do the most all at once you know um maybe start off with meditation right getting into a regular meditation practice first being able to do that so then that way you can also learn how to distinguish what you are Right, and then really know your own inner world first. Um, second thing is doing easy things, like I said, to change your energy with your body, like doing one shift, right? Like maybe start eating like a few more vegetables, like maybe get like a greens powder, right? And drink that like a couple times a week just to help you feel better and notice a change in your energy. Maybe, um, right, listen to the solfreggio frequencies while you're uh, working. Just so it's, you know, working in the background while you're doing your thing. It doesn't have to be a thing like, I need to study. <laughs> I need to read this. Uh, mm -hmm. I need to like do all these things. It's, it's easy steps that you can do to just kind of get yourself open and ready. You know, you can't really, um, you know, we all want control, right, over our lives mm -hmm. and say like, okay, this is going to happen from three to four o'clock. Right? And then we're going to go on to this and then we're going to go on to this. All you can do is kind of make the conditions for it. And if you trust, if you put the conditions, if you get yourself in that state, that the work will happen eventually, the more you put yourself there. So just taking baby steps like that. Maybe, you know, starting with a few crystals, maybe like getting yourself, I like to tell people start with working with your ancestors. That's the easiest spirit guide to get in touch with because like they're literally with you all the time. They're like your ultimate clam squad. So maybe start there. Maybe write a letter to your ancestors, right? Who you'd want to get in touch with. Ask them to send you the way that you, they want to work with you, right? Or an answer to a question or something like that. Like literally write it down a letter, put it like on a little ancestral altar. It can be something as simple as like a photo and like a flower or something that represents your culture or your family to you. You know, maybe you put some food or like some water on it. Um, you know, maybe it's like an, a, an art piece, like a sculpture or a painting or whatever that is. You put that on your altar or you put that letter underneath your pillow, you know, and ask like dream or for them to come to you in dreams or meditations and show you what it is. And, I, they will they will absolutely it's a great time to do it now too because october the veils are thinner good time to work with ancestors also mercury retrograde so mercury is the psychopomp who works with healing um the dead but also bringing them to the other side so mm -hmm. um right now is a great time to do ancestral work so yeah working with like your ancestors is first off is like the easiest thing to do because that's like the the medicine that's already in you that's the wisdom that's already here and they just want to like unlock it and help you when you said dream how do you look into that because i normally don't dream a lot but lately it's <laughs> it's a little weird oh yeah mercury retrograde does that um get a dream okay. journal so like a specific notebook or whatever, or keep your phone handy, but maybe on airplane mode while you go to sleep. And as soon as you wake up, write down your dream or speak it into your voice memo, because sometimes that's faster. Mm -hmm. um, just speak it into there and then you have a record of it. And then there you go. But you just keep it handy, like somewhere where you know it's there. And yeah, that'll help you with your dreams. Also setting intention before you go to sleep, I would like to remember my dream today. You know, when I wake up, I would like to remember parts of it that are significant. Let's see. But how would, like, it, like, like dream interpretations, I guess, like, how do you, how do you know what it, what they're trying to tell you, like the messages that are in your dream? Yeah, I think you just feel it. Because, um, you know, your dreams do serve a function technically in your brain. They do re like organize all the data that's there. You do, do need to be in REM sleep. There's a physiological reason for that. Like you literally go insane if you don't. But, um, you know, a lot of people dreams, what you do is a, a process called astral projection, where a part of your soul goes and does things, whatever that is. Um, and uh yeah your dreams aren't just dreams sometimes sometimes they are sometimes they aren't and you kind of eventually figure out which ones are or aren't 
But if you just write them down, whatever it is, no matter what, don't judge them, just write them down. You'll eventually figure out which ones are like something significant. They'll feel significant to you. Can they traumatize you? Your dreams? Sure, definitely. I mean, like if you're having like nightmares, for sure. Your spirit guides ideally shouldn't, but I mean, we also have shadow spirit guides, like because they match up with us if we have a lot of wounds or whatnot. They're just feeding our shadow, so that can lead us sort of into that cycle. You kind of don't know if you have them unless, like, you have someone like me working with you, but um, you know, uh, ideally, your spirit guides are meant to be for your highest and best good, but totally, like, everyone occasionally needs a clearing of the shadow ones who don't need to be there and like let's replace them and give you better guides and lead you down a better path and you notice a difference mm -hmm. but do a lot of things really just come up during mercury retrograde though like i don't really know too much about it yeah oh yeah well you know i always tell people don't fear the retrograde um but think of it as a time of like looking within but also really evaluating what you're doing and is it really working right like so so being more exact and precise about what you're doing right so like double checking appointments because a lot of people see things like technical issues technological issues x is coming up x is coming up x is coming up um, <laughs> did, I, did i say your x coming up yes yeah. x is coming up um issues with your family, right? Issues with long-term investments, um, signing contracts, first dates, like change, like having the, um, defining the relationship talk probably is not a great time to do during a Mercury retrograde. It's really just meant to be a time for you to reevaluate what you're doing and if it's really working, right? Not trying to do so much, not trying to do the most, but really thinking about, huh, who am I and how is this showing up in my world? And if I could change something right here, right in my inner workings so that things could change on the outside in the external too, could show up better, what would that change be, right? Do I need to like change the way that I communicate? Are my thoughts and my actions really aligned? Like, am I saying something but not really doing it? Right? Am I like being lazy with the way that I communicate with people? Am I being, you know, am I not like being respectful of my time or of others' time? Right? Am I taking care of myself well? Is this really what look, taking care of myself looks like? So, you know, instead of seeing it as a negative and like, oh, all this bullshit happens, right? Just think of it, mm -hmm. oh, okay, you know what? Maybe I need to have like, I could do a tune up somewhere and change some things and have better outcomes because of it. That makes me feel a little better, but <laughs> yeah, just, no, yeah, don't think it's overwhelming. Like, what do you find overwhelming? Just like getting hit with like all the like reprocessing things, and mm. I don't know. I feel lost. I guess in a way, like I'm overwhelmed to the point I feel lost again. Okay. So yeah, so this is also too with Mercury retrograde. So looking at sort of like unfinished projects or things that didn't turn out the way that you wanted, right? And you kind of lament, oh man, why wasn't that different? Why wasn't da 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 da? And it sucks, totally. Like it's totally kind of hard, right? But it's processing that emotion sort of like when you get traumatized, right? You put it, you compartmentalize it in a different part of your brain. So like when you have time, you can process it. Surprise, this is that time. <laughs> this, is the, this is that time that you get to process it. So it doesn't keep operating in the background, right? As this like glitchy program. Instead, you can be like, you know what? I, I really do wanna do something different. I really, maybe I need to look at this code, right? And like figure out what's up with this code and then like reprogram something new in there. So. I, it just doesn't keep happening, right? So I don't keep thinking about my ex, right? If you keep thinking about your ex, then maybe the question is like, okay, well, if I wanted to meet up with them, what was, what is it that I would get from that, 
right? Is it like comfort? Is it, you know, just somebody that I used to know? And if it's some, is it love? Is it just attention? And if it's, you can pinpoint what it is that you need, right? If it's comfort, if it's love, if it's attention, if it's whatever, connection, then you can figure out a different way to give yourself that other than going back to that relationship that you knew didn't work out anyway, right? So then what else can I do instead? if that's what I need, right? Hmm. You know, to, maybe I can go horseback riding or maybe I can go spend time with people who, you know, genuinely care about me, right? Maybe I can do this, maybe I can do that. How can I pour into my own cup and address this hurt that's there, this wound, right? This shadow. So in that way it feels heard and understood and like I'm here and I'm listening, right? Instead of trying to like, kind of like, distract yourself right with this person who like temporarily you would feel okay because it's just the same thing you've done before all right we know where that road goes yeah. <laughs> right yeah. and know so what am i going to do instead to address here is it like a common thing that always happens is it during like exes coming back in retrogrades uh it can be for people it can be exes or like feelings of like, um, or like noticing patterns in relationship, right? Like if you tend to get like emotionally unavailable people, those people come popping up again, maybe not that exact same person, right? But people who put you into that situation again, so you can figure out, okay, do I really want to go into this or do I want to do something different this time? Does this really serve me or, you know, what else is there? Um, but yes, exes are, Huge, huge, huge. <laughs> oh man, that's yeah. I don't know. Uh, so it's not just well, you. That that's that's a good thing, right? It's not just oh, yeah. you. There's there's a reason why there's memes on it. There's a reason like there's there's very many reasons. It's it's not you. It's it's everyone. You know, all, all it's it's very natural for us to seek that from the external, right? The mm -hmm. the thing for here. And it's hard for us to turn here and do the work, but like here yeah. is where it's really needed, you know, because if you can be here for you, right, and not run away when like things are hard or whatever, or you want to run towards other people, but you can stay steady here, right? You, you don't necessarily need someone to be there. You clutch less, you grasp less onto them. You're not so attached to them and you're right. You can maintain your autonomy and they may maintain theirs and that's a lot healthier. Um, but you can also always soothe yourself, right? You're not dependent on someone else to be there. You know that you can always find a sanctuary here and a home here where you will be seen and heard and loved and understood. Um, and that other person's not really, you know, if you find someone who, who you can do that with, who you have a healthy relationship, great, right? But even if you're in a healthy relationship, you still have to do it be able to do it here first because your partner's not able to do all that stuff for you it's it's up to you to do mm -hmm. it so yeah mm -hmm. it's and trust, trust me the work is not the work is not like always fun but on the other side um it is better to be free right yeah 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 the work that never stops right like do you think it ever comes to a halt oh jesus i wish sometimes i wish <laughs> It's, I've been at this for like nine years, but you know, I tell people it's like a, a spiral. Healing is a spiral. You like start off at this point, you go away from it and then you come back to it again and then you go away and then you come back to it again, and go away and come back. But each time you come back, you have more wisdom. Hopefully you've grown, right? You're able to see it from a new perspective. You're able to see new layers of it, but you can only see the layers of it that you're really right, that you've changed your perspective about life or things or that you're ready to really see, right? If you're not there yet, you're just not gonna be there yet. And, and there's just different layers to it. And sometimes it's freaking exhausting. Like, can I get a break? I wish, I wish it's, you know, you have times when you definitely do, right? And it's definitely much easier uh, but sometimes you do wish like, man, can there just be a there there? And then when you do that, that's when life like knocks you on your ass and like, nope, like you just, this is the process, right? That there's never any ground beneath us. Mm -hmm. Essentially, we always want there to be ground, but there's never any ground beneath us. Life is inherently unstable. 
but what you can do is you can learn to write like surf the waves, surf the urges, surf like the emotional things that are going on and, and not get bogged down in them as it is unstable. But if you learn to surf it, you become skillful, right? You can like manipulate, you can cut across, you can do this, you can do that. But you have to learn how to do that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, it's just self-mastery. Self-mastery is the thing that leads to freedom, you know, and um, mm. either you master yourself or you don't. And if you don't, well, then man, you're always right a slave to someone else or something else. Right? It's just about sort of setting yourself free and self-mastery is the way to do that ultimately. Right? Understanding that you are more than the stories you told yourself. You are more than the stories other people gave you. You're more than your wounds. You're more than your past. You're more than all of that stuff. And you can be whatever it is that you want to be, but you're really not going to become everything you want to be until you acknowledge all these other things that are there too. Right? You don't really rise into your greatness, right? By like pretending your shadow doesn't exist. You have to learn to embrace it like Beyonce, you know, and not like pretend to be like goody two shoes, but like, no, this is who I am. This is like some real ass shit. I'm owning it and you're going to deal with it because you know what? I'm not ashamed. I'm not apologetic. And here you go. This is my truth. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, ultimately, it makes you better, it makes you tougher, it makes you grittier, it makes you more resilient, but it also makes you kinder, it also makes you softer, it also makes you enjoy life even more, it also, like, makes you open to possibility and, like, gratitude and opportunity around every corner, so, man, isn't that amazing, isn't that, like, such a gift, and oh, I think it is, I think it is. When you started your business. Mm hmm Um, like, were you doing the other stuff before you, like, or did, like, did you transition over to starting your business, or were you just like, I'm gonna do this, and then you just... Oh, I had, uh, I had a regular corporate job for the first two years, no, for the first year, I had a regular corporate job, um, maybe a year and a half, and then I remember it was in November, I had this Mayan fire ceremony done for me because it was my Mayan birthday. I resonate very much with like the Mayan culture and cosmovision. I went on this whole trip to the Yucatan. That's another story. But um, <laughs> I had this whole fire ceremony and basically what they do is um, they give you messages um, from these different um, Mayan ancestor deity things. And one of the messages that I got is that I was being called to go into my path immediately, full force, like 100%. Um, you know, because I was doing my business and at work at the same time, my business was like my side gig, my side hustle. Mm -hmm. um, and I was having clients and I was, you know, not really a lot though. And I told my guides, I was just joking when I heard that. I was like, well, you want Charlene to do this full time? I was like, well, you better get Charlene some clients and you better get Charlene some money. And no joke, not even a month and a half later, January 8th, my job lets me go. Um, but I get unemployment and I get severance. Um, I think I get two months of severance. And I got, um, what is it? I also got a bonus with that too, which was more than the previous year's bonus along with that. And in that like month and a half between like mid November to Jan to um, December through December into January, like I had like got started getting a lot of clients, like regular clients. Like I finally kind of got my social media a little bit dialed in. I don't know what it was, but suddenly it was like people left and right and left and right. So when my job cut me loose, I was like, well, that was certainly a gift. And then I had money and then I had clients and then I was like, well, let me go and experiment and try this thing. And ever since then, I have been full time. It's been, um, gosh, over a year and a half, a year and almost two years now. Almost two years now. Yeah, but I just do this full time. Um, and it was a thing, you know, I just had to trust the guidance that I got and just keep taking steps forward in full faith and do the best I could. And if you do that, you things will happen. You have no idea what they will be, but there will be things and you just have to be open to them. 
And uh, I realized a long time ago with my spirit guides that I don't always have the best ideas. Um, they have bigger, better ideas for me. So I let them, whatever they want me to do, I'm like, okay, I'll just show up. That sounds like, I don't know, man, that sounds like a lot, but we're just, we're going to go there. Yeah, well, I'll do it. Okay, I'll show up, guys. <laughs> and I do, and amazing things happen. And that's really cool. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm still, oh, I'm not sure where to go with the whole coaching thing yet. I mean, but I guess it shows up in different ways, like me doing podcasting and stuff. Um, I guess I'm just afraid to take that leap. <laughs> mm, into doing it full time. You know, um, here's the thing. You kind of just have to go and do it. You just have yeah. to leap and jump and you just have to trust that you'll figure it out. Yes, you're going to make mistakes and like, you know, your messaging is not going to be exactly right. Your social media is not going to be exactly right. But if you keep trying, you'll figure it out. If you don't try, well, then you won't. So just, just, <laughs> <laughs> just put yourself out there and just trust like eventually you'll figure out your thing and how it all comes together for you. And not everyone has to have like a one-on-one -on -one life coaching business, right? Some people use it in different ways. And if you use it in different ways, maybe that's the way it's meant for you and that's okay. You know, it doesn't have to look like how everybody else is doing. What's important is that like, it's the truest expression of yourself. Um, yeah, you'll find it. Just stay curious, stay open, try new things. You'll find it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think the social media thing is like really hard, right? And then because literally you brought up like it could be like lower like energy stuff because it could get really crazy on social media. Mm, you know, uh, I like the whole Gary V thing. Just put it out there. Just put it out there. Don't make it about you right? Make it about something bigger than you, a message you have to share, or just something you want to say, you know, to other people. A lot of times, if you think about, like, the things that you wanted someone to say to you, or the things that you wish that you could hear, you say that to someone else. Um, you know, you don't have to have it all figured out, but um, you don't have to doubt that you've got good stuff there. You do. You do have good thoughts, and all you need to do is just feel confident enough to bring them up and out. Um, but yes, it's a whole thing, you know, um, social media is very interesting because there's, right, like, um, a lot of people who want you to just talk about being on brand da, 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 and messaging and all that stuff, but then there's also, I think, so much value in being authentic, right, and just speaking as who you are, and the right people will resonate with that. Um, yes, there's definitely value to, you know, learning how to uh, present your message in a way that's succinct. Nobody wants to hear a long ass story unless you're a really good storyteller. Um, you know, but, um, oh yeah, totally. But you know, um, you just, it's, you figure it out or if you can't figure that, you, you, you do, you, sometimes you need some help from other people. You can't just do it all yourself. Um, it's good to have outside input, but yeah, I have full faith. If you just keep making steps forward, you know, maybe ask for a little help, you'll figure it all out. You'll be fine. You'll be good. It's hard for you to trust it, but. And I think like most of us that like, come out of like the, the program, like we get so fixated on like finding our niche and, <laughs> and all that stuff. It's like our focus goes there and then, I don't know, everything becomes a mess, I feel like. Yeah, but... <laughs> it's easier if you just start putting stuff out because then if you just get used to putting stuff out, then you'll eventually find your niche. Like, oh, this is what I'm always talking about. Oh, this is what people resonate with. This is what I really like. But you won't get there again if you don't like just put it out there so just start putting stuff out and trying things out you know like john says spitballing and you'll figure it out and maybe like if it makes you feel self-conscious even better put it out you if it makes you feel self-conscious yeah. that, that's the thing you need to put out <laughs> <laughs> that's the hard part though isn't it i feel like it is feeling self-conscious like yeah putting certain things out like uh, I guess, where do we draw the line of like sharing too much info about ourselves or our mm. experiences and, you know, I guess that's the part I'm not sure on, like. Oh, well, boundaries, you know, um, that's, uh, if it involves other people, you want to make sure that they're cool with you sharing whatever that aspect is, um, for one thing. 
Um, but I think it's also really important to have stuff about your story. Like not everyone deserves it. Like, even though I, even though I share so much, right. So easily. And so honestly with people, there's a lot that I don't share with people. There's a lot that I actually hold back. Like that's not for you. Like that I've just decided, you know what, that's not for public consumption. You all don't need to know that. If you want to talk to me one-on-one, I might tell you, but I don't need to offer that to people. And it's, um, again, that you, you get used to like knowing your boundaries, you know, like, yeah. and you can be like a hundred percent, like authentic and real and all these things, but still have things like, no, this is for me. Like, that's not for you. This is for me. Like there, like I have some rules with my stuff. Like I don't like to show pictures of kids. Like even if it's my friend's kids, you know, I don't, cause those are my kids. I don't want to show I have my thing is public you know I don't feel comfortable doing that um but it's a line that you decide right that you draw in the sand that you're like okay you're not gonna see this like you can I'll tell you all of this about here and I'll be like really transparent to you about this but I'm not gonna tell you this part that's like it's uh, Brene Brown you know she says not everyone deserves your shame story they're not in that place to receive that so it's you know you have to have situational awareness and self-awareness about what's really feels good and right and just to you, but also, you know, isn't also overstepping other people's boundaries as well, because some people aren't ready to hear, like, your whole story. You know, they live in a very, like, cookie-cutter world where they want to pretend like things are, like, just like this, and sometimes that's just not the people you want to share it with, so discernment. You learn over time, Um, but yeah, especially being Asian, you know, for sure, like the family stuff kind of sometimes you have to like tread lightly on because you don't want, you know, yeah. something to get back to somebody else and da 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 But yeah. That spreads fast. <laughs> yes, it does indeed. It does indeed, you know? <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh no, it's that Mercury retrograde because the internet was like messing up. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it's not yeah, everything. Yeah, sometimes I... it's just your internet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> true <laughs> um, um as far as like i guess i'm okay so i bought this deck and i don't know much about like pulling cards okay like i like somebody told me like you should feel like connected to your cards is that true oh yeah definitely it's just like any tool or any person right you want to build a relationship with it you want to think it has a personality So one of the things I like to do when I get a new deck is I like to go through and I like to actually look at each card and touch it, like physically touch it to get the stamp of my energy on it. Some people like to do things where like they sleep with their card, right? Like underneath their pillow. Some people like to put it in their sacred altar space to charge, you know, just like you would a crystal. Some people like to do like cleansing on it, a whole thing whatever it is but you do want to just kind of form that relationship with it so those are some ideas for what you can do probably the easiest is to look through each and like just hold each card maybe think about huh what does this mean to me what what message do i get from that and then like put it aside so you're physically touching it but also right mentally and physically like connecting with that card and energetically too so the first thing is that and then you just kind of like shuffle it around Maybe you start asking questions, cutting the deck and seeing what card shows up. And then from there you can start like, you know, um, like just pulling a card, like maybe in the morning for yourself and just seeing what it is that you get, looking up the definition. Once you get used to doing that, maybe just pulling the card and just seeing what do I feel with it? What is it that I get with that? Um, and then you'll see. You just know. And then you can start like testing it against, right? Like the, what it says in the book that meaning is. And you're like, oh, okay. Interesting. Um, if you keep like a journal, it also mm-hmm. helps because again, it's like the same thing with your spirit guides. Like when they see that, like you're actually making note, taking notes, like, oh, look at this bitch. She's real serious. She's taking notes. Shit. Let me send her some more information. Right? <laughs> They'll start like actually doing that. So if you keep a journal with it, it's helpful. So you see like, what cards you pull but also what happens to you that day Mm -hmm. like oh wow that was more accurate than i thought you'd be surprised um but yeah you can start off doing that with your card you know your neck and your throat are attached to your expressions of truth so Mm -hmm. you know and especially the back of your neck that has to do with your past so letting that kind of go that tension go around it 
everything we have really just wants to be seen and heard and understood, even the parts that we want to hide, right, and bury. And if you can just see it and hear it and just be with it, it's actually not so bad. It's actually kind of freeing just to be with it and not be so scared with it. And it has information for you, so yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. I think yeah, it's beautiful. Well, it's, yeah, cause it was so weird because leading up to now, I guess, like I can feel that like tension build up and it's been like bugging me but I didn't know that it was gonna be released here with you mm -hmm. I don't know do things happen for a reason mm. totally <laughs> and maybe a part of you did know that it would be released by talking to me <sighs> so that's why you did it oh. <sighs> well thank you <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome see but this is what right trusting your intuition is right like having no good reason for wanting to say something but all of a sudden you do and then well there there is an actual reason that that happened that's that's what it is to move in faith you know and to trust yourself and you can do that you've got it look proving it to yourself right now <laughs> how do you how do you know if you're like trusting yourself though like i don't know i have so many things around that but um usually if it's something around fear that's not your intuition if it makes you feel small it makes you feel fearful um even when your intuition tells you something that kind of makes you afraid there's this part of you that's not afraid right um there's this part of you that's like that's still right like yeah that could be scary but that could also be really cool um so you go and you do it so yeah we can definitely mistake our ego for our intuition, but if we think about being in the present moment, right? If, because right, when it comes from our ego, it's usually thinking about things in the past or like disaster baiting about the future. Mm -hmm. It's usually fear-based stuff. Um, it's usually like some kind of story that's looping around around our head, right? Our intuition is based on not, is based on faith and trust. It's based in love it feels expansive it doesn't feel like it's making us smaller like even if it's scary it feels like i could be stepping into something new you know that sort of excited feeling it feels completely different when it's your intuition again where it's just right where you're just present to the present moment where you're not stuck like disaster baiting or thinking about the past and being really sad about it you're just like you know what i'm gonna go for it right now in this moment um but Yes, it's a process of distinction and discernment. And look at you following your intuition so well. You can do it better than you think, probably just overthinking it. Mm. Yes, <laughs> I am a very, very crazy overthinker. <laughs> it's okay. That's what human beings are. We have a monkey mind, default mode network in our brain, designed to do that, to chatter all the time. But it always looks for problems and flaws, and it always speaks in the negative. So right it's up to us to bring right our higher self our own intuition it's like you know what we'll be okay let's forge ahead <laughs> i've got this yeah okay i just i just do want to thank you for like reaching out and doing this too because um i was like literally on the verge of giving up really yeah oh don't give up you know here's the thing right making content and all these things you have to like keep putting it out there keep putting it out there keep putting it out there even when it feels like there's no engagement and then one day something something will just resonate with people and that's what you're looking for right you're just creating the conditions and mm -hmm. the more you can show up and create the conditions the more the thing will be likely to happen Mm -hmm. So I thank you for continuing to show up and use this as, you know, as your guy, just keep showing up. You just, you just keep putting it out there. Even when it feels futile, somebody it'll, and if it helps just one person, doesn't that feel good? Yeah. Yeah. doesn't have to help like the whole world just yet, but if you can reach just one person, that's amazing. Yeah, because now I just feel like a lot of a lot of times I do find healing in these conversations, even though if it's just whatever goes, um, 
yeah, I think there is a lot of healing in it for me too. Oh, well, that's that beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, no, I, I thank you for showing up and allowing me to be a part of your um, connection, right? And your healing in this space. It's beautiful. Do you think, um, like, spirits and, like, guys, like, place people in our lives at the right time? Oh, totes. Okay. <laughs> totally. <Just> wondering. <laughs> oh, absolutely. All the time. Um, and you know when those people, you know who those people are. You really do. Right? Uh, there's a part of you that does. There's a part of you that also tries to deny it. Says, no, that's crazy. Da -da 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 -da. And um, you have to really figure out for yourself what's really true, what you're going to believe. So absolutely, though, there are certainly people who are meant to be in our lives. Absolutely. I see it all the time. We have soul contracts with people, soul connections, destiny paths, all these things. It's really beautiful. But um, yeah, you can always trust it. Even the people who have hurt you the most, they can be your greatest teachers. They were meant to be your greatest teachers a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So all of it, it's the whole dance of it, even the suffering is beautiful. Even the joy is beautiful. All of it really is. It's, it's just another opportunity to come alive and to awaken to all the beauty that's right here, that life is. Yeah. I think now it's just like, there's a lot of feelings now, I <laughs> feel. <laughs> uh. Well, I would say for you, sir, uh, definitely drink a lot of water mm -hmm. that will help time in nature maybe some journaling maybe just spending some time here with the parts of you that are feeling feelings because that's that all just wants to be seen and heard and understood too so if you can just be there for it that's all you just have to hold a container and hold that space i still feel like i'm not like i still feel like um like I'm not ready to become a coach yet because I feel like there's so much stuff. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. You don't have to think about that. You can just think about, right, documenting your process as you go through your stuff. You don't have to think so much about the coaching part. Clients will come. Focus on you. Right? Focus on you. The right people will be there. Well, thank you so much. For this. You're welcome. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to do this with you. <laughs> well, I'll let you go and uh, get you all prepped up for your call. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was a pleasure to connect with you. I'm so glad that you feel better. I really, I really am. I really yeah. am. And thank you so much for trusting me. Um, I really am very honored by you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Now I'm getting emotional. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. But yes, do the water, do a little bit of time in nature, do something kind for yourself. Always be kind to yourself. Um, yeah. 